killing Jesus Christ instead of killing the devil who brought sin. This story requires, it does not really add up. Is that something that we need to know? Well, my dear friend, today we are going to find an answer to this all-important trendy question. Why did God kill Jesus instead of killing the devil? I will be right back. Welcome back, my dear friend. This is Pastor Isaac Apo, and today I'm so excited that we can meet again as we discuss this important subject. Why did God allow Jesus Christ to die for our sins instead of killing the devil who brought sin in the world? In fact, when you go on social media, this, among many others, is one of the questions that is confusing people. And people are asking. It is everywhere. You can see in these uh, memes on TikTok, killing Jesus Christ for our sins instead of killing the devil. I beg, this story doesn't add up. In fact, one famous Ghanaian actress by the name of Nadia Buari also asked the same question. She said, why did God kill his only son for our sins? Instead of killing Satan, this story doesn't add up. Of course, if you want to approach issues of the Bible with human understanding, I tell you, nothing would add up. But the true question is that as human beings, we have been blessed with common sense. Yeah, I hope you understand. So we need to understand certain things that we believe in. Why didn't God just kill Satan, but kill his own son for our sins? Is Satan not the one who brought sin? Why didn't God simply end everything up, I mean, end all our problem, end all our misery by simply killing Satan? I mean, just think about it. It would have solved the problem, isn't it? It would have ended everything. We wouldn't have been going through all this pain, all this killing, all these mis- problems that are in the world. Why didn't God just end everything there? But decide to allow Satan to live, to torment us, to... to, to cause all the pain in the problem. God, why didn't you do that? I believe you are looking for an answer to this question. And in fact, so many um, social media atheists, that's how I call them, they are only atheists on social media just to get views, uh, on social media posting these questions and they are basically mocking Christians because to them they see that they have this common sense and that Christians should wise up. It does not add up according to them. This story doesn't add up. There's something missing. But the question is, would killing Satan really have solved the problem? Again, if that wouldn't have solved the problem, why didn't God do something different instead of allowing his son, Jesus Christ, to die? But the bottom line is, I mean, the main question we want to find answer to is, why did Jesus Christ even have to die in the first place? Now, I want us to begin by first of all, looking at why God did not kill Satan. In fact, when we find answer to that question, everything will fall in its right place. But I want us to understand that everything that we are doing here, it is straight from the Bible. We are not going to use our our human imaginations. Because, listen to me, let's assume that we all believe in God. Yes, I know most of you are Christians. Let us assume we all believe in God. And God is this powerful God, all-knowing God, you know, who created everything. Yes, he created everything. Now, if God is God and we believe him to be the creator, the omnipotent, the omniscient God, this all-powerful God, then obviously his ways are never my ways. And obviously, again, his understanding of things, I can never understand his ways. I can never understand his mind. I want you to understand that logic. Because people will come and say, well, Christians will tell you that we can't understand God's ways. Yes, because if God is really the God that we understand him to be in the Bible, and that he made everything, he said, let there be this, and it was so, then it means that he is such a powerful being that for me to be able to grasp who he is and understand his ways, would basically make me even powerful than him. I believe you understand that. Now, without understanding, let us find an answer to why God did not 
kill Satan in the first place. First of all, my dear friends, I want you to look at sin as something like a virus, maybe like the COVID-19 you know, virus. When it gets into you, you are infected, and because you are infected, you need to be destroyed. I mean, you need to be treated. When somebody gets infected with COVID-19, that person got, probably may have gotten the infection from another person. Now, let's assume that I have been infected by COVID-19 by this person. I need the treatment just as the person also need the treatment. Now, destroying the one who infected you with the virus will not make you well. I hope you understand that. And so killing the source does not solve the problem. In other words, if I got COVID-19 virus from you, Destroying you will not make me well. I will still be infected. I hope you understand that. When Satan started his rebellion against God, sin as a virus, Satan infected, according to the Bible, one-third of the angels in heaven with his lies. And they all became his followers. At that point, a new system of cleansing those infected with sin had to be put in place by God. God could have just destroyed Satan. In fact, God could have just, and everything would be over. Right there. God would have, would, I mean, God could have destroyed Satan. But guess what? Just as virus infects one person and both need to be treated, destroying Satan will still not have solved the problem of sin. Since many other angels in heaven at that point were already infected with the sin virus. I hope you understand, my dear friend. Now, again, one important thing that we need to remember is that God did not create us nor the angels as robots programmed only to obey him. No. God gave us freedom, the freedom to choose to serve him or not to serve him. That is why many years later, Joshua declared, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether you serve the God who made the heavens and the earth, or you serve your own self or the God of your imaginations. You see, both the angels and mankind were endowed with the power of choice known as free will. So when Satan allowed pride to enter into him, he was only using his free will. He was only using or exercising the divine gift of free will that God has given to him. But unfortunately, he used it against God. And when he deceived the other angels, they also had the power to either accept or refuse. But according to the Bible, one third of the angels chose to believe in the word of Satan instead of the word of God. In other words, the angels who sinned and the people who have sinned did not sin because they were forced they chose the way they are living. I hope you understand that. Another thing is that we need to remember that Satan also challenged the authority and the fairness of God's government. He had told lies about God. If God had destroyed Satan immediately, guess what was going to happen? The angels would have begun to serve God from the point of fear rather than from choosing to love him voluntarily. This would have actually defeated the very purpose that God had in creating human beings or people with the power of choice in the first place. I mean, just imagine if God had killed Satan right there after he, after he making all those accusations, how would anyone know that God's ways are the best when no one, no one had dared to try any alternative? So, my dear friend, God gave Satan the chance to demonstrate his way because he is also agitating or he's also saying that his way is the best. God has given him the chance to go on so that at the end of the plan of salvation, on the day of judgment, the whole world would actually know which way or whose way is the best and whose way leads to destruction. That was why, my dear friend, Satan was given an opportunity even to the point of tempting God-created beings, Adam and Eve. So the question I want to ask you right now is, who would you choose? 
God's way or Satan's way. The choice is yours. You see, by the time God is done dealing with Satan at the end of the wonderful plan of salvation, mm -hmm, every human being in the entire universe would agree with a declaration in the book of Revelation chapter 15, verse 3 and 4, that great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty, just and true are your ways, King of the ages, who will not fear you, O Lord, and bring glory to your name. For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. Hallelujah. At the point when God is done and everybody would get to understand the plan and the process, then we will know that God has always been right all this while. So my dear friend, the reason why God did not kill Satan, as I want to sum it, they will continue. The reason why God did not kill Satan was because killing Satan would not solve the problem of sin. No. He is the source of sin. But he has infected so many people. So many other people, including angels and human beings, have used their willpower to choose Satan. They have been, we have been infected. In fact, the Bible says, for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. We have been infected. So when you destroy the source, the rest of those infected will still be sinful. In other words, if God had killed Satan, what is going to happen is that Adam and his wife were still going to continue. There are evil ways. Cain was still going to kill Abel. You know, sin was still going to continue because the, the, the people had been infected. The angels were infected. One third of them, they were cast down into this world. I hope you understand that. Satan cannot die to save us from the sins that he has caused us into. We need somebody different. Now, we'll explain later on. Now, another reason why God did not kill Satan, but rather sent his only son. Jesus Christ, as I said, Satan is a sinner and his death cannot save us. I hope you understand. In fact, as I earlier on said, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that we have all sinned. In other words, we, we, we have all chosen the path of the devil. And so for us to be free, we needed someone who is different from us. Someone who walked the way we walked, but never sinned to pay the penalty for our sins. In fact, Romans chapter 6, verse 23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. So as we were, as we were infected with the sin virus, the, our, our only destiny was death of no return. So we needed somebody to take our place. And the only person that could take our place was a righteous person. And who is righteous to save us? Hmm? Who is righteous? And we need to understand that it is not that Jesus Christ had to die to satisfy the wrath of God. No, you see, we need to understand certain things. I have sinned and I have to die for my sins. It is like that. God cannot do anything about it. I hope you understand me because I chose, I voluntarily gave my life to death. I hope you understand that. Satan brought death. And I have chosen to go with him to death. God will not force you out of the hands of Satan. You need to voluntarily choose to give your life back to God. And once you choose to give your life back to God, God will still have to, you see, being a just God, the penalty for your sins still have to be paid. But for you, he says, I am going to let somebody pay for you. This is what is called grace. I hope you understand that. So what it means is that the person who can pay for our sins must be somebody who does not have the sin virus living in him. So killing Satan would only eliminate one sinner, but the rest of us will still have been infected with sin. So the death of Satan is not what's important. I hope you understand. The only person who was perfect to serve as our redeemer from sin. The only person who was sin free was Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 that we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but one that has been in all points tempted like as we are yet with our sin. So Jesus Christ came into this world lived like you and I, went through all the temptations that human beings will go through. He went through the lowest low. 
help you understand, the lowest low in poverty, he went through the most painful death so that you and I can receive the righteousness of God. All right? Okay, so with that understanding, let us now delve into exactly why Jesus Christ had to die for our sins. Why did God not just clear our sins without letting anyone to die? You see, God is a just and a perfect God. And because of his nature, he could not simply sweep sin under the carpet and, and go on running a very perfect universe. No, God doesn't do that. I mean, if you're a father, if you're a mother watching me right now, you wouldn't do that. If your child does something, being a good father or being a good mother, you would deal with it. You not just say, oh, it's okay. I love my child, so it's okay. Oh, it's okay, let's continue. No, no, no. It will not solve the problem. God must deal with the injustice of sin. Just imagine that a criminal should come before a judge and that the judge will simply excuse a crime of murder, a crime of rape, theft, simply because the judge loved the criminal. What would the society think of such a judge? I don't think such a judge would even be loved. And God would not be like that. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 18, verse 25, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? God would have to do what is right. You see, selfishness has a natural consequence that eventually results in death to the innocent. As Romans chapter 6, verse 23 makes us understand that the wages of sin is death. And so Jesus Christ, who is our judge and our king, what he did was that instead of us taking the consequences of our sin, Jesus Christ took it for us. Rather than us human beings being inflicted with death, Christ took that death upon himself. The consequence or the wages of sin, my wages for my sin was paid in full by Jesus Christ. Because if I should pay for that, I will not exist and neither would I see the salvation of God. Now before I wrap up, I want to summarize everything I've said um, with the following points. Number one. Why Jesus Christ have to die? I mean, why God allow his son to come and die for us? And by the way, God did not kill his son. I hope you understand that. God gave up his son so that his son would go through the hands of wicked sinners like you and I and be killed so that we can receive the righteousness of God. Why did God have to do that? Number one, Jesus had to die to fulfill the divine justice. According to Romans chapter 6, verse 23, as I said, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So the wages of our sins are automatically death, but what God gives is eternal life. And the only way God could give us eternal life is for somebody to pay for our sins. You see, in our lives as human beings, we expect justice to be served. It is what makes our world fair and orderly. And God, as a just and a perfect God, holds this principle even in a higher regard. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. And because of this, sin cannot just be brushed under the carpet and be treated as nothing. God would have to deal with this. That is why Jesus Christ had to die. He took upon himself the consequences of my sins, serving the sentence on behalf of humanity. Jesus Christ, the perfect innocent judge, stood in our place, demonstrating the ultimate act of love and justice. Don't forget that. Number two, Jesus had to die to reconcile us with God. When you read the book of Romans chapter 30 verse 25, the Bible says God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be reconciled by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19, the Bible says that, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sin against them, but canceling them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation, that is restoration to favor with God. So you see, my dear friend, a meaningful relationship is not built on constant wrongs and offenses. Instead, it involves forgiveness and reconciliation. This is exactly what happened with the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. By becoming a propitiation for our sins, Jesus took the hurt and the sin caused by humanity unto himself. Can you imagine that? And in and, and so doing, he created a pathway for us to reconnect with God. In the same way, since God has also committed into our hands the work of reconciliation, 
when somebody wrongs you, we must choose to accept the hurt and forgive and move forward. This is how Jesus' sacrifice reconciles us to God. Number three, Jesus had to die to demonstrate God's unselfish love for mankind. You see, Satan blackmailed God. He went about preaching to the angels, and today he's still doing that, that God is wicked. So you see, God had to prove to the world that he truly loves us. And today we know it. That is why we are even asking this question. Why didn't God kill Satan? Because we know that his ways are evil. His ways are destructive. You see, it is not only about Satan who was to be killed according to how we understand things, but God could have wiped out all of us away from existence because we all sinned. He could have killed all of us and started all over again. I mean, God could have created a new Adam. He could have created a new Eve. But God rather showed us love and gave us another chance. This is love. This is love. You see, love is not only truly love unless it is selfless. (laughs) It is easy to say I love you, but if you cannot live love, if you cannot show love, your love is just vain. I hope you understand that. And it is easy to accuse God of being self-serving as Satan did. But Jesus Christ proved that God is love. God is not self-serving. That is why John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world. And by the way, so many Christians think that God is this wicked king who, who is saying hey, everybody must die. But Jesus Christ came and said, no, let me go and die for them. No. When you read John 3, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his son to die for us. It was not Jesus who came to beg God that I'm going to die for them, don't punish them. It was God who gave. I hope you understand that. And so by willingly enduring suffering and death, Jesus Christ demonstrated God's unselfish love for humanity, refuting any accusation of God being self-centered. My dear friend, This act shows us the depth of God's love for us, prompting us human beings to reflect the same kind of selfless love towards other people. And finally, my dear friend, Jesus Christ had to die to provide mankind with redemption and salvation. When you read the Bible in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, the Bible says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who hung on a pole. Imagine being a captive and then someone willingly takes your place, setting you free. My dear friend, this is the story of, the, of redemption through Jesus Christ. When Jesus accepted the consequences of our sins upon himself, he redeemed us from eternal loss offering us a way back to a life free from the ultimate consequences of sin, and that is death. It is through Jesus' death and resurrection that you and I can receive the gift of salvation, making us safe to live eternally with God. When you read Romans chapter 5, verse 17, the, the second part, the Bible says that for by the trespass of one man, death reigned through that one man, How much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through that one man, Jesus Christ? So there you have it, my dear friend. The death of Jesus Christ is the only way we could have been saved. There is no other way to salvation. In fact, the Apostle Paul declared in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, that Christ died for sins once for all. Again, when you read Acts chapter 14, verse 12, the Bible declares that, And there is salvation in no one else. There is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. The only name, my dear friend, that brings salvation to humankind is the name Jesus Christ. So, dear friend, God allowed his son to die so that we could be free. According to God's perfect plan, after everyone had understood the deadly nature of sin and the destructive nature of Satan's philosophy, God would then destroy Satan and sin. And he would also have to destroy all those who stubbornly resisted his grace and clinged to Satan's alternative. My dear friend, God is just as anxious to resolve the sin problem and the suffering of people in the world. But he is waiting until you would also give your life to him. The question is, would you surrender to this Savior? 
would you, would you accept this offer? It is a free will. Accept it and be free. Until you accept it, his death has no power over you. Remember, you have the choice to accept him or to refuse him. But I want to tell you, just as Joshua said, this day, choose you whom you will serve, whether you serve the God who died for you or you serve the world. It is my prayer that you choose God and you have life. May God bless you. If you have any question, please send it to us on our WhatsApp on the screen and we'll be there to help you. Remember, God says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Shalom.